It's James. We're in the Net News Ledger newsroom. We're joined today by Dr. Doug Tom, who's a professor emeritus from Lakehead University, but more importantly, as the Stanley Cup playoffs get going, Dr. Tom, or Doug, is an amazing expert on hockey and on the Stanley Cup. And we've invited him into the newsroom to talk about the Stanley Cup and some of its history. Welcome. Thank you, Jane. The Stanley Cup has a lore of more history behind it than any other sports trophy in almost any other sport. Mm -hmm. What kind of things do people not know about the Stanley Cup that maybe they'd like to know? Well, uh, first of all, it's called the Stanley Cup because of a former, one of the first uh, Governor Generals of Canada, Lord Stanley, and he purchased a um, very nice silver trophy or cup in London, England. He bought it for $50 in our money today and it, he, he used guineas to pay for it. But he himself really wasn't into hockey too much. Uh, he never he never got to see games uh, in the Stanley Cup. Uh, he w he was called back uh, to England um, uh, just after he had bought the cup, and he donated it to, which was not the National Hockey League. It was the National Hockey League was called something else before, uh, just like the. Um, Stanley Cup had went through three different names. There are two, two different names before it became the Stanley Cup. In other words, the, the league that we know right now in 2018 is, um, has been renamed from an original uh, league mm -hmm. that existed. That original league began about 1894 and it was very small. It had hockey players, and there's always been considerable debate about the origin of hockey. Where did it start? And uh, it's still controversial. Uh, there's three different theories about it. The, the one that I tend to think is most accurate is that it probably began somewhere, maybe McGill University, where um, a group of uh, fellows got things going there. In the early years, they didn't use a puck. They used a, bo a ball. But there's still controversy about the origin of the game. Uh, I'm saying that the National Hockey League of today was named something else several times before it was named the National Hockey League. And the Cup had a different name to, from uh, the Stanley Cup. And, this, and the Cup itself started out small. Yes. And it's kept having yes. the so, layers. Yes. Yes, they've improved the uh, size of it. Uh, it's, uh, it's probably the most uh, valued trophy in pro sports. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. And it's had, on occasion, a rough ride. Mm -hmm. um, it's been. It, it went today when they when a team wins the cup, each player gets a day with the, the Stanley Cup, and yeah. they get to do what they would like with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, here in Thunder Bay, of course, we've had uh, Patrick Sharp mm -hmm. bring the cup in. You know, several years ago, he had a day with the, sharing it with the city, and then also with his friends and family. Mm -hmm. um, we've had Matt Murray with the cup a number of times yeah. um, and probably gearing up to want to do it again mm -hmm. as fast as he can. Yeah. Um, but in the past it's also had, uh, it was dropped into a creek or into a ditch at one point. Yes. And then forgotten about. Yeah. And then they went back to rescue it. You know, it's, it's, it's something that today would never happen. Yeah, so it's been stolen a few times and they've, re they've uh, got it back. The reason why it would be hard to lose it right now is that there's a uh, one person whose full-time job 
is to protect it. And he's always got it. He's always there. And that's his job. Mm -hmm. We we had a, a chance to have a brief meeting with that uh, that gentleman protecting the cup last time that Matt Murray brought the cup because uh, uh, Amanda, my partner's five-year-old grandson, mm -hmm. got on the bus with Matt Murray. And it was, uh, when we reviewed the video later, it was the... Uh, the crew with the Stanley Cup who asked him if he wanted to go on the bus and he of course said yes and he was set to go and spend a day with Matt and the cup and have fun. But you know it was surprising but yeah they, they literally hand the cup off wearing you know cotton gloves. Yes. And then it's up to the you know the, the 24 hours with the player. His time starts and then it moves along. This this year this is the second time now in in a while that the Toronto Maple Leafs have made it to the playoffs for two years in a row. Mm -hmm. And Northwestern Ontario and Leafs fans seem to be just, you know, we're a lot of fans of the original six teams here in Thunder Bay. And excitement is already growing with the Leafs in the, in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And it's been a long time, you know, for Leafs. It's been since 1967 since they last won the Cup. Yeah. When they last won the cup, and the names are on the cup, what's mm -hmm. a bit of the history there? Well, um, they were, the Toronto Maple Leafs last won that Stanley Cup in 1967 when they were part of a group of teams called the Original Six. Uh, at that time, there were uh, six teams in the in the league. There was Detroit, New York. Boston, Montreal, Toronto, who I said six? And Chicago. And Chicago, right. Um, because of the way professional hockey was at the time, it's debated whether you had to be very, very talented to make one of those six teams or not. Uh, the salaries weren't very um, high. Uh, compared to salaries now, the players definitely were um, recognized by the communities. Uh, everybody loved the hockey players pretty well. And um, either the Toronto Maple Leafs or the Montreal Canadiens in those years were winning the Cup. Mm -hmm. Montreal must have won the cup uh, at least eight years in a row once, I can remember. They had Toe Blake as a coach. They had some real uh, stars like Maurice Richard and, mm -hmm. and his brother Henri. It, it was a different era for hockey. And uh, that's, a, that's quite a point because um, People say now that many of those players probably would not make the National Hockey League teams now, and there are a great number of them. Mm -hmm. The league went through an expansion in the uh, early 1970s, and uh, the World Hockey Association was formed in those years. And the World Hockey Association got into trouble financially, and. Uh, many of the teams became NHL teams at that time. They had their own cup at the time, but what happened eventually was we had a, a new NHL and uh, many, many teams, uh, not too many Canadian teams, and there was a point at which Montreal Toronto and the other four teams in the original six were not winning the Stanley Cup. I think the Leafs drought has been, I mean, every, the, the jokes across the, the world of sports, you know, it's, mm -hmm. you can tell it's spring because the Leafs are all falling and all the, <laughs> you know, all the silly jokes that get told because Toronto has had such a long time since they've made it into the playoffs or got past the first round in the playoffs. And you know the the hope springs eternal. Mm -hmm. You know and that '67 team is still, you know, Dave Keon, 
is mm -hmm. you know one of the best known leaves of all time and then if I say that I'm gonna have people argue with us about who was better or who was more popular uh -huh. you know what I remember from that era of hockey was nobody wore helmets yes you know, and I remember when in 1972 it was the Canada Russia hockey series and you know the NHL players of that era who came to training camp to get into shape mm -hmm. were convinced they were gonna just you know, eight games against the Russians, eight easy victories, uh, no big deal. And they got to, to Montreal, and they lost 7-2 to two yeah. in, in a lopsided game and literally shocked. I mean, that's our game. And all of a sudden, this upstart team showed up and right. was beating us. I mean, we won the next game in Toronto, um, a tie in Winnipeg, I think, and a loss in Vancouver, and then on to Moscow in, in hostile territory. And, and, you know, it was Paul Henderson of Toronto Maple Leaf who scored the winning goal. You know, it, the, game, the game keeps changing. Yes, and, and th that was called the uh, war on ice yeah. at the time. It, it, it was a real turning point in uh, the development of uh, professional hockey when it was realized that this Russian team uh, had the ability to beat, uh, say, the best assembled team of NHLers at the time. The, um, the, the uh, Canadian team won the series, as most people will know. Uh, it, it was a very rough series. Many of the players uh, uh, fought the Russians physically on the ice and um, some of the players, the Canadian players had nervous breakdowns after that, like trying to control their emotions that they had gotten so uh, wound up with all the excitement and that sort of thing. No, it was a, it was a real significant, uh, they called it the Summit uh, Series in Hockey. Mm -hmm. Um, coming back to the Stanley Cup for a moment, some of the intriguing things about the Cup are that um, there are names on it that many people would probably never have heard of. There, there's actually uh, at least two women's names on the Cup. And the viewers are probably saying, well, why is that? Yes. <laughs> and uh, with, the, with the Stanley Cup, when a team wins it, some of the players on the team that won the Cup have a mother, say, working in administration. Mm -hmm. And that has happened uh, at least twice, maybe three times. I know one of the situations was uh, one year the... Colorado Avalanche team won the cup and one of the players' mothers was in administration at the time. There are many misspellings of people's names on the cup, including uh, some of the Thunder Bay uh, connection players, uh, the Stalls. Um, the first time I think the Stall name was put on the cup, uh, they had an extra A in, his, in the name. So three A's. Yeah, they had three A's, and they had they had to change that eventually. Um, the cup has t taken a beating as it's gone over the years. It's now it's always fixed up uh, each year now for make sure that it looks good. There are there are positive and negative stories about the cup. I, I don't know if I should mention well, that's, the that's, negative. Let's share the positive. <laughs> well, there's a claim that <laughs> it, it it has made some neat journeys too. Yeah. It's it's been to the to the North Pole. It's been overseas. It's you know it, it's probably the most recognized trophy in sports. Yeah. Well, it, it's been, it's been all over Europe now. When when the when the players from the teams that win the cup uh, take it to their hometowns, if you look at it now, uh, that would cover most of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't we don't have too many NHLers out of, um, say, New Zealand or Australia. 
there have been players out of um, England. Uh, Tony Twist played uh, at least one season with, I think, the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, he came out of Scotland. Uh, people like Gary Unger from the St. Louis Blues became very big at administration in England of, of the league there. Mm -hmm. um, Thunder Bay has an awful lot of connections to hockey um, and um, I think that's a whole other program we could yes. have, yes. James, about the connection. And I think I think from there we'll, we'll head into that, um, talking about the Stanley Cup with uh, Professor Doug Tom, and we'll be back shortly with uh, a discussion of some of the Thunder Bay hockey. It's James with Anthony's Ledger.